Hey everyone, in today's video we are going to be talking about charging plug-in vehicles, so stay tuned. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, thanks a lot for coming by. We're going to be talking about charging plug-in vehicles today, and it's going to be kind of technical, but I'm going to try to explain it hopefully in a way that everybody can understand. I have so many viewers on my channel that have been driving electric cars for a long time. And then I have some people who are brand new to electric cars and haven't even had a hybrid vehicle before. So I'm gonna to try to deliver this information in a way that everybody can get something from it and hopefully everybody can understand. So here we go. Number one, all batteries in all electric vehicles are DC power. A lot of people also don't realize that you have the main, they call it a traction battery, the high voltage battery. It's large, it's somewhere inside the vehicles, sometimes in the floor pan, sometimes in the rear of the vehicle. So you have that large high voltage battery, but you always still have a 12 volt battery as well. So you have two DC batteries inside your car and each vehicle has a DC to DC converter that converts that high voltage from the larger battery pack into 12 volts for the smaller battery that powers your accessories, your radio, USB plugs, all that kind of stuff. So number two, AC power actually goes into the car from your house, and then once it's into the car, it is converted to DC power and recharges the battery. Number three, a lot of people have asked me about plugs. Like what plug should I get? What like outlet plug for your house to plug in your wall charger, your EVSE? And the answer is always a 1450 outlet. Hands down, that is the one you wanna go with. Most wall chargers actually come with the 1450 plug already attached to it. In the open EVSE build that we're gonna be doing in the next video, that one includes a 1450 plug as well. So just after, or hopefully before, you get your electric vehicle, you wanna have a 1450 installed in your house. They're really not expensive. The plug itself is gonna be maybe 30 bucks, and the closer you are to a breaker box, is gonna be cheaper. It's the wire and the labor to run the wire, that is gonna be more expensive. But take my word for it, 1450 outlet, that's what you want. Number four, this is a big one that I see and hear all the time. An EVSE, commonly what people call a wall charger or a wall connector, is not a charger per se. EVSE stands for Electric Vehicle Supply Equipment, and it's just a high-tech switch. There's nothing inside of it that is actually charging your car. It's, it's really just a switch. There's a relay in there that opens and closes based on the car's needs. You can definitely still call it a wall charger, I've heard it called a cord set or a wall connector. You can definitely call it by any of those names, but you really should at least know that it's not actually a charger. We'll get a little bit more into the onboard chargers in a couple minutes. But number five, for every EVSE, you could have a level one or a level two EVSE. Level one is gonna be 110 volts to 120 volts, depending on what you have at your house, but that is called level one. Level two is gonna be 200 to 240 volts, again, depending on the power you have in your house. I definitely, definitely recommend you get a level two charger. You might be able to get by with a level one if you don't have to charge as fast, but it is gonna be significantly slower to charge on a level one. But more importantly, at least to me, a level two charger is gonna be more efficient. And that just means a higher percentage of the power that is coming out of that wall plug is gonna get transferred to the car. EVSEs are like everything else in every other step. There's gonna be a little bit of losses every time electricity goes through it. So you might only lose one or 2% of your power going through one of these EVSEs, but you're gonna lose less by going through a level two. So I would definitely go with a level two. Number six, I've seen a lot of people call level three DC fast charging, and that's just not accurate. It's not true. DC fast charging is a totally separate thing. So you might hear people calling it level three, but just know it's not actually level three. There's a guy on YouTube named John Kelly. He's a professor somewhere out on the West Coast, and he teaches kids about electric vehicles. They dissect everything, take it apart, and put it back together. Very cool, I love his channel. I'll have a link below if you guys are curious, but. He's a super, super smart guy. He's made videos like this, but they're just more technical. But I highly recommend checking out his videos. In the link I'll have below, he talks about level three and why it's not actually level three charging. So if you're curious, you can definitely check that out. All right, number seven. I told you guys we're gonna get to this one. I'm gonna talk about the charging of the vehicle. Now charging is different for pretty much every vehicle. 
Every company has their own charger and they pretty much all charge at different speeds. And before I get too into it, just know that the onboard charger inside the vehicle, that is the device doing all the work. It's not the EVSE, it's the onboard charger that determines the charging speed for the vehicle. My Toyota RAV4 EV has the Gen 1 Tesla charger, which is quite fast. It is 10 kilowatts and it recharges the car from totally empty to totally full in about five hours. But unfortunately, my brand new 2021 Toyota RAV4 Prime only has a 3.3 kilowatt charger and it is significantly slower. I made a video a few weeks ago in which I tested the charging speed and the capacity of the vehicle and it took six hours to recharge the car from empty to full, which you might think is only an hour longer than the Toyota RAV4 EV, but the battery is significantly smaller. So the battery in the Prime is only about 18 kilowatt hours and the battery in my EV is 41 kilowatt hours. So it's half the battery and still takes longer to charge. So the onboard charger in the vehicle makes a big difference. It matters a lot with electric vehicles or any plug-in hybrid. Number nine, this is something that everybody should know. Charging is measured in kilowatts. A lot of people will say, oh, I'm charging at 40 amps or 15 amps, whatever it is. But the more important number to communicate to somebody your charging speed is kilowatts. And the higher kilowatt number is definitely better. Number 10, still talking about kilowatts, kilowatts definitely matter. For example, we were talking about my RAV4 EV, I can charge from empty to full in about five hours because that car has a 10 kilowatt charger. But pretty much all public charging stations, like the charge points, they're all rated at 6.6 .6 kilowatts, which you might think that number isn't very different, but it does make a big difference when you're charging. If I was charging from totally empty to totally full on a public charger, it's gonna take me about nine hours. So it's a pretty major difference. So I really like charging at home because it's just significantly faster at 10 kilowatts. And that's why we want these electric vehicles to include a high kilowatt onboard charger. Think about trips and maybe you run an errand in the morning and then you come home, have some lunch, you recharge for a little while, but then you gotta go back outside again and you're limited by your onboard battery charger because that is gonna dictate how long it takes to recharge that car for your second trip or for the next day. All right, number 11. This is also a big one because I hear this all the time. People are worried about touching the plug. And I have mine, one of mine, right here. And you have all these connections right here. Nothing in here is going to hurt you. You could lick this thing and it's not going to do anything. There is no power at the handle that is ever going to hurt you. You could plug in while standing in a puddle. You could be soaking wet. The rain could be all over your hand. It could be all over the connector. The snow could get in there. No matter what, you're not gonna get electrocuted. It's not gonna hurt you, trust me. I mentioned to you guys earlier that the EVSE, the wall charger, is just a high-tech switch. So what happens with this J1772 plug, that's the technical term for this plug, as soon as you hit this button to disconnect it, it kills all power coming through here within milliseconds. So by the time you have this unplugged from the vehicle, power has already been cut here. One of these terminals is a pilot wire that communicates with the vehicle to say, hey, I'm plugged in, now you can send power. Or when this button gets pushed, they stop communicating and all power is cut off. Number 12, last one, I promise. My favorite EVSE is Open EVSE. You can check out their website, openevse.com. They make really affordable chargers with really good quality parts, and I cannot recommend them high enough. Way back when I got started in this world, EVSEs, the wall chargers, were crazy expensive. They were $1,500 to $2,000, and there was just no way I could afford to do that. But I came across Open EVSE, which is an open source company, and I found that I could buy kits from them put together these EVSEs for like 500 bucks. That was many years ago and prices have definitely come down now. But not only that, they're also selling these as complete units. So they will put them together for you and mail them to you. And not only are they very competitively priced, maybe even a little bit cheaper, but they are the most versatile unit that you can get. The coolest thing with the new one that I just got, it has Wi-Fi built into it. So I'll be able to change the charging speed from my couch inside the house if I want to speed up or slow down the charging on my vehicle. Another thing that I love about these units is that it has a button on the front of it that you can change the maximum amperage going to the vehicle. So what I would do is I would take one of these EVSEs with me. I'd go to my mom's house or if we went camping, wherever we were, 
I would look at the plug, look at what's available wherever I could charge, and I could change the maximum amperage coming through that unit so I never overloaded that circuit that I was charging on. And I'll get into this a little bit more in the next video, but I had all kinds of adapters because the unit itself has that 1450 plug and I have a ton of adapters that I could convert that 1450 plug to a regular wall outlet and charge on 110 or charge on a welding plug or a shore power plug if I was at like a, a boat marina or something. So with the Open EVSE, it's just so versatile. I highly recommend them. I'll have a link below to their website. If you need an EVSE or think about upgrading or just getting one for the first time, I can't recommend them high enough. You definitely won't go wrong going with Open EVSE. Okay, so that's it for my speech. Let me know in the comments below if I missed anything or if you have any other questions, I can definitely address them in a future episode. I just wanna make sure I can help you guys the best I can and share my knowledge with you. So if you have any other questions, definitely post them in the comments below. And if this was just way too boring and I should never do this again, <laughs> definitely put that in the comments too. Help me improve so I can make better videos for you guys. And again, the next video, we're gonna be putting together this open EVS e-charger that I just got. So thank you guys so much, and I'll see you in the next one.